The most amazing features of tropical oceans are its beautiful and fragile coral reefs. Let us see and try to find out what is a coral reef. A reef is a coral community consisting of several thousand organisms living together. Although it looks like a sleeping and inactive underwater bush, the reef is very much alive. Reefs grow very slowly over time. You'd be amazed to know that an inch of coral reef takes nearly a hundred years to grow. Corals are small inch-long ocean animals. Young corals attach themselves to the limestone skeletons of dead corals. Over thousands and millions of years, layers of skeletons build up and grow into reefs. Reefs are home to a quarter of all ocean species, called the rainforests of the sea. Coral reefs are endangered. The largest coral reef system is a Great Barrier Reef of Australia. It is 2,000 kilometers long and clearly visible from space. It is made up of more than 2,500 separate reefs. Many animals live near corals. Corals provide food through the food chain they support. Corals also provide shelter from predators and from ocean waves and currents. Here is a single sea rod coral colony growing from a sand and coral bottom near Rainbow Reef. This single colony was only three feet tall, but there are five different kinds of fish using this coral as a shelter. These fishes form a mixed species school, like a school of fish containing fish of the same species. This long slender fish is a trumpet fish. Trumpet fish are familiar hunters of the tropical coral reef. Trumpet fish are lurk and lunge hunters. They hunt by hoping a small fish won't notice and will swim close enough that the trumpet fish can catch it with a quick lunge. Trumpet fish can change colors and often pretend to be branches of coral. An amazing fact about here is that almost everything you see is an animal. The tiny yellow fish with purple heads are called fairy basslets. Maybe this trumpet fish is trying to catch them. The brown branches that look like a plant are actually a coral called a deep water sea fan made by a colony of thousands of tiny coral animals called polyps. The polyp is a basic body form of a coral animal. It is essentially a round animal with a mouth in the middle and a ring of tentacles around the mouth. These are white and yellow polyps. These are tiny animals called great star corals. Each animal is one orange tube about half inch big and about as tall as they are wide. Each animal reaches out into the water with a ring of short white tentacles hoping to catch food as it floats or swims by. In the middle of some of the rings of tentacles we can see a slit that is the animal's mouth. The tentacles are lined with tiny white dots that are stinging cells called nematocysts. As we have learned each animal is called a polyp. Each polyp will reach out into the water and seize its prey with its tentacles. The stinging nematocysts will kill or paralyze the prey and then the polyp will drag its prey into its mouth. These coral polyps only come out at night. By day, they hide down in holes in their skeletons. In this picture, each animal is one ring, sort of like a donut cut in half. Each individual animal, called a polyp, lives in the center of the ring. These coral polyps only come out at night. By day, they hide down in holes of their skeletons. These are polyps of a purple sea whip coral. The sea whip coral is a colony of hundreds of individual animals. Each animal is called a polyp. Each polyp is white and has eight tentacles. Each polyp is about one-fourth of an inch tall. 
Here, the individual polyps can be seen in good detail. The eight tentacles surround the mouth of the polyp. The mouth appears as a bright white spot in between the tentacles. Each tentacle is covered by short hair-like projections. Notice that the foot of the polyp is on a raised base on the branch of the colony. The branch is built by the polyps. This is an amazing scene. The tentacles of the sea whip coral catching tiny sea creatures at night. The small swimming creatures may be young fish, barely one eighth of an inch long. The tentacles curl around the prey and pull the prey into the polyp's mouth. These are but few of the living creatures that have made the oceans their home. The ocean can also support very large life forms. The blue whale is the biggest animal on Earth. It can be over 100 feet long. Blue whales are so large that a small person can crawl through their main arteries and 20 people can stand on their tongue. Animals in the deep sea also live in a tough environment. One creature, the anglerfish, deals with the darkness by attracting its prey with a lure lit up by light-producing bacteria. When the prey is drawn to the lure, the anglerfish captures it with its big mouth for a tasty meal. The oceans contain a vast amount of living space. It's amazing. There is 6,000 times more living space in the oceans than on land. Animals live at all depths in the ocean, from the surface to the seafloor, 10 kilometers or 6 miles down. They range in size from the microscopic to the largest animal that has ever lived on the earth, the blue whale. The true king of the ocean is fish. More than half of all living species with backbones are fish. Fish are amazingly successful. They come in all shapes and sizes, from gobies about one centimeter long to whale sharks reaching 18 meters as big as a whale. Zooplankton. Other than fish, there are many more animals living down in the mysterious world of oceans. Animals that live floating near the ocean surface among the plankton are called zooplankton. Many of these animals are microscopic, but the largest, such as the biggest jellyfish, can be more than one meter wide, with tentacles nine meters long. There are two animals in ocean called salps and larvations, who pump seawater through their bodies, catching the phytoplankton in gel-like nets. These are the marine vacuum cleaners, known as salps. They are planktonic filter feeders, each one a tireless vacuum, continuously clearing phytoplankton cells from the sea by filtering water through mucus nets as it swims. They can occur as individuals or in colonies that form long connected chains. The more we know about the oceans, the more mysterious it appears. Have you ever wondered what is the secret of life in the deep sea beds? Until now, it was unclear how anything could live down there with no sunlight in complete darkness. Because when there is no sunlight, there cannot be photosynthesis. And when there is no photosynthesis, there are no plants. When there are no plants, there will not be food for animals that live deep under. So how do these animals survive the deep sea? It appears that Mother Nature has got survival solutions for all its living organisms, wherever they are on this planet Earth. As for the survival of these deep sea animals, it turns out we can thank tadpole-like creatures called giant larvations for secreting huge balls of mucus. The levations live inside these mucus balls until they get too blocked up. At this point, the larvations discard their old homes and make new ones. The old dirty mucus balls sink like bombs and provide food for deep sea animals. Ocean animals have less need for a skeleton than do land animals because water supports their bodies. Look at this animal. This is called the octopus. 
Octopuses have no bones whatsoever, allowing them to form their flexible bodies into endless different shapes and squeeze through tiny crevices. They use their suckered tentacles to grasp, suffocate and overpower their prey. Pufferfish. A pufferfish scares away its enemies by gulping down water and inflating itself to appear much larger. The porcupine fish. A close relative of the pufferfish has many prickly spines sticking out of its body. This can scare its enemies away. If it is caught by another fish, it can still enlarge itself in the fish's mouth, but both fish will die. Lionfish. Lionfish use venom to defend themselves. If an attacker presses against one of the lionfish's spines, the spine injects a poison so strong that it can kill a person. Goby are about 4 to 10 inches long. Gobies belong to a family of fish with a worldwide distribution in both salt and fresh water. Whale. Whales are large mammals that live its entire life in the water. Like other mammals, whales of large, highly developed brains and nurse their young with milk. Whales are enormous in size compared to other mammals. The blue whale is probably the largest animal that has ever lived, reaching a length of nearly 30 meters or 100 feet and weighing 180 metric tons. The blue whale makes the loudest sound, over 150 decibels of any animal, and can be heard over thousands of kilometers across the entire ocean. Certain other whales, especially the dolphins, emit clicking sounds that bounce off objects. The returning echo is used as a sonar image of their underwater surroundings. They share this ability called echolocation with bats, shrews and a few kinds of animals. Sperm whales and killer whales. Sperm whales and killer whales are wanderers without specific migratory routes. An individual sperm whale might, in its lifetime, swim around the world. Let us find out about deep sea fishes. Anglerfish. The anglerfish, or Melanocetus johnsoni, uses its bioluminescent capability in its hunt for food. The fish dangles an illuminated pod to lure prey close enough to be snatched. Viperfish. The viperfish is one of the fiercest predators or killers of the deep sea. Its large mouth and sharp fang-like teeth can easily recognize this fish. These fangs are so large, in fact, that they do not fit inside its mouth. Instead, they curve back very close to the fish's eyes. The viper is thought to use these sharp teeth to pierce his victims by swimming at them at high speeds. This fearsome looking creature has a long dorsal spine that is tipped with photophore, a light producing organ. The viperfish uses this light organ to attract its prey. By flushing it on and off, it can be used as a fishing lure to attract smaller fish. Just like on land, life in the ocean too depends on energy. No animal can move or grow without energy. Most ocean animals get their energy by eating plants or other animals. The connection between organisms based on the transfer of energy is called a food chain or a food web. Most food webs start with the conversion of sunlight into food through the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is an important process that occurs at the surface of the ocean. But deep within the ocean, food chains are based on the conversion of chemical energy into food. This process is called chemosynthesis. Water itself is a valuable commodity. Oceans cover nearly 75% of the Earth's surface. However, because ocean water is salty, most animals and plants, including human beings living on land, cannot drink it. 
but in places where there is little fresh water, desalinization facilities have been developed to make the seawater worth drinking. But this is nothing compared to what is in store deep under the oceans. And so many living organisms are surviving using the vast resources of the ocean, how can we human beings be left behind? We have also developed various ways of exploiting the vastness of the oceans. Thousands and thousands of years ago, our ancestors used the oceans only as a source of food. Slowly, they started moving deeper into the sea and built huge ships that could survive in the ocean for many days. And thus, we human beings developed ourselves as skillful sailors and started taking risks of going on great exploration through the sea routes. The sailors made some daring voyages and the 15th century came to be known as the Age of Exploration. More and more sailors started going out into the open sea to discover new land. In 1498, Vasco da Gama sailed from Portugal to India. This journey of his opened up sea trade between Europe and Asia. Today, more than 90% of goods are transported across the world through cargo ships. If we look around, we can be sure that most of the things that we use today must have reached us through the sea road from different parts of the world. Thanks to the explorers today, we can travel to any part of the world through sea. So through the ages, man has been able to conquer the vastness of the sea. But man's curiosity never ends. And today we human beings are trying to discover and solve the mysteries of the world that live under the sea, going way down to the bottom of the ocean. The new inventions through the ages have revolutionized the deep sea exploration and today we human beings are looking ahead to exploit the untapped wealth hidden under the sea. It is fascinating to know that as a land is full of natural resources, the oceans too have abundant resources lying in its depth. The minerals at the bottom of the sea are difficult and expensive to collect, but the more accessible resources like fish have been massively overexploited in various parts of the world. Seafood is a major source of protein and is very healthy to eat. Some fishes are rich in certain fats that help lower the levels of our blood cholesterol. Lower cholesterol levels in human body means a reduced risk of heart disease and stroke. Many countries can't afford to grow chicken and meat, so they rely on fish for their protein needs. Another valuable commodity from the sea is salt. As we human beings started farming and eating lots of cereals and vegetables, salt has become a very essential part of our diet. We could not drink the seawater because it is salty, but people learned to separate salt from the seawater. We human beings have even learned to make good use of the sands of the oceans. Sands are used by the house and road builders to make concrete and for many other purposes. Oil and gas supplies are one of the most important things that we get from the reserves under the seafloor. Oil and gas drilled from below the sea provide more than 40% of the world's supply of these fuels. As supplies from land get used up, man will start moving deeper waters, exploring oil and gas that has become a major source of energy in today's world. Today, tourism and leisure have also become one of the most important ways of using the oceans, whether it is surfing, diving, sailing or fishing. These leisure and fun-filled activities have all become multi-million rupees industries. It's really surprising to know that there is enough gold dissolved in the oceans to provide everyone in the world with a lump weighing about 4 kilograms. But let us be warned, over-exploitation of these resources of the oceans have its negative impacts too. Sooner or later, it can have dire consequences on the survival of human race on land. The world has already started getting the glimpses of the things to come. Recent overuse of the ocean by man has led to the decline in population of some commercially caught fishing. Overfishing is a real problem that does not have an easy solution. According to an estimate, 90% of the world's fisheries are overfished. 
and if we don't do anything about it, a coming generation will have to face dire consequences in future. Another important thing is, when we think of the marine biome, health issues don't usually come to mind. But there are many problems facing the fish and animals of our ocean. The major health-related issues facing the marine biome are oil spills and water pollution. Pollution from land often ends up in the sea. Some pollutants are dumped there, others run into the sea through rivers and air pollutants fall into sea with rain. Oil pollution is most obvious when a tanker spills its cargo into the sea. Oil pollution is happening all the time at a low but harmful level. The amount of oil running into the sea from land is nearly 10 times that from major tanker spills. The other problem is becoming more and more evident. With evolution comes higher technology but also more pollution. Many companies, especially the ones that are near rivers and lakes, use the surrounding water as dumps. They dump tons of oils, acids and scraps into the world's water every year, trying to save money. There is a lot of trash in the ocean by everyday people who are too lazy to find a trash can. Some forms of pollution are particularly dangerous because they build up in the bodies of marine animals. This happens especially with dissolved heavy metals and artificial chemicals that are organic or carbon-based and contain chlorine. These organic chemicals might be responsible for the mysterious mass deaths that sometimes affect seals, sea lions and dolphins. Now, people across the world have started rising to the problems. There are many different groups that are trying to clean up the waters and beaches. One main group is Greenpeace. They are a group that is trying to save the endangered animals of the ocean. With awareness being created, many companies are starting to change the way they get rid of their waste by using more earth-friendly products and recycling more. Some companies are finding ways to cut waste almost completely. Even though big companies are trying, they still are giving off pollution, if not into the water, then into the air. This gives rise to a billion dollar question. Which is worse, corrupting one biome or corrupting all the biomes? Nobody is yet ready to answer this question. Let us now look at the reasons that challenge the existence of life on the land. The first one is rising seas. Earth's climate goes through cycles over thousands of years. Sometimes factors combine to make the global climate cooler. When this happens, snow falls instead of rain and stays on the land instead of running into the sea. Ice builds up at the poles and water in the oceans shrinks slightly as it gets cooler. As a result, sea levels fall. Scientists describe such times as ice ages. At other times, the global climate warms. And when this happens, seawater expands. Polar ice melts and sea levels rise. We're at present in the middle of these warm periods, called an interglacial. Let us see what will happen with the rise in temperature. The seawater will expand slightly. More polar ice will melt. This will result in the rise of sea levels. Many smaller tropical islands, such as Maldives in the Indian Ocean, lie only three to six feet above sea level. Such islands could even disappear underwater within the next few centuries. Large areas of Bangladesh bordering the Bay of Bengal are less than six feet above sea level. Here, floods from storm waves already endanger many millions of people. Global warming and pollution are not the only threats facing the oceans. Another is habitat loss. The destruction of fragile marine habitats such as seagrass meadows, coral reefs and kelp forests. The worst habitat destruction occurs near shores or in the shallow water and the damage is often hidden from view. Coral reefs are very sensitive to human activities. Pollution and muddy water running into the sea from towns can kill coral. Tourists and fishers can damage coral by touching it, by standing on it or by dragging anchors or cables across it. Many reefs are overfished. Sometimes traders stun exotic fish with cyanide to gather them for the aquarium trade. The cyanide kills the coral. In recent years, coral reefs have suffered from a mysterious condition called bleaching. 
the coral organisms lose the microscopic algae that live inside them, which make the coral turn stark white, as though bleached, death often follows. Scientists are not sure what causes coral bleaching, but many suspect a rise in sea temperature caused by global warming is to blame. The oceans contain many resources that could prove useful in the future. One is energy. The heat stored in the oceans and the constant movement of seawater are vast resources of energy that have been barely trapped. The technology to harness tidal power already exists and electricity has been generated using it. Each tide produces enough electricity for tens of thousands of homes. Ocean energy sources causes less pollution than power stations driven by fossil fuels. But there are drawbacks. Scattered over large areas of the deep ocean floor are potato-sized lumps of valuable metals such as cobalt, manganese, copper and nickel. These lumps form over millions of years as dissolved metals slowly crystallize out of seawater. The lumps are worth trillions and trillions of rupees, but they're expensive to harvest because they lie at least four kilometers underwater. Maybe one day when the demand for these metals is great enough and mining technology is more advanced, the lumps may be scooped from the sea floor. The oceans are not just a pleasant place to visit, they're vital for the health of our planet. They provide an indispensable part of our food supply, but more than this, the circulating oceans and the organisms within them create our weather and our climate. We have to preserve our oceans for us and our generations to enjoy its benefits for a long, long time to come. The future of these vast oceans lies in our small hands. When we rise to the occasion, this is again a question that requires immediate attention. It is very important that we all human beings, each one of us as an individual, contribute to save the oceans. We don't have to do anything extraordinary. There are many simple things that we all can do to help protect the ocean. Recycling our waste products and making sure that chemicals don't go down our household drains is an easy and best way to start contributing. Buy seafood that is harvested. This will assure that more sea creatures don't get hurt by fishing. Lastly, let us learn more and more about the ocean. If we have more knowledge about the oceans, we will be able to create more awareness amongst people and help save these vast resources. The future of our oceans lies in our hands. Let us join hands and pledge to do every small possible thing to save these vast resources before it becomes a threat to the very survival of us human beings so that our beautiful planet Earth remains beautiful forever.